All right. In this video, I'm going to talk about the facial muscles, which are part of the muscles of the head. So, all muscles of the head are divided into two groups. You have the muscles of mastication, which are the muscles that allows you to chew your food. And the other group is the facial muscles, which are uh, responsible for the facial expressions like laughing, thinking, angry, surprised, whatever. Uh, I would like to also add that the muscles of mastication are der uh, derivatives of the first visceral arch during the embryonic development while the facial muscles come from the second visceral, uh, visceral arch during the embryonic development. So in this video again we're going to cover the facial muscles. The uh, muscles of facial ex uh, expression uh, are divided into five groups. You have muscles of the scalp, muscles around the oral opening, muscles around the oral opening, muscles around the nose opening and muscles around the ear opening. And here are the numbers of muscles I'm going to cover. But before I start, I'm just going to uh, tell you all the basics about how a muscle is attached in your body. Uh, a muscle has two attachment points, origin and insertion. Origin is the attachment side that does not move during uh, contraction while insertion is the attachment site that moves when the muscle contracts and uh, function is then the movement of the muscle when contracted so muscles of the scalp and muscles around the orbital opening are four muscles you have muscle uh, musculus occipital frontalis here musculus pro Set uh, procedus here, musculus orbicularis ori here, and musculus corrigatus supercilia, supercilia here. So musculus occipital frontalis covers your whole upper cranium, starts at the skin of the eyebrows and ends at the occipital part. The musculus occipitalis has two bellies and a tendons part at the top called epicranial aponeurosis. So it starts down here at linea nuclearis superior at the occipital. Here is the first belly. Uh, this occipital belly, belly does not really have any, any uh, function. So then it sits on galea aponeurosis or epicranial aponeurosis in English and then stretches all the way to the frontal bone where the frontal belly is going to sit and that is and the frontal belly is attaches to the skin of the eyebrows and the function of this muscle is lifting the eyelids and producing wrinkles on the forehead just like this picture right here so the next muscle is musculus procedus. It ha it originates uh, it arises from the bridge of the nose here and inserts at the skin of the glabella. And the function of that one is called is that it causes transverse wrinkling wrinkling of the skin above the bridge of the nose. The next muscle is musculus orbicularis uri. This muscle surrounds the orbital opening and has three parts. It has pars orbitalis, pars palpebralis, and pars lacrimalis. Uh, pars orbitalis um, originates at the medial margin here. Uh, this place is called, or the uh, place it attaches to is called ligamentum palpebrale mediala. And it goes all around here, and it also inserts at ligamentum palpebralum mediala. Um, and the function of this muscle is best visualized on this picture right here. It makes it possible to close the eye tightly, as you see, and by drawing the skin around the eye 
towards the center. And the next one is uh, pars palpebralis, uh, which originates at ligamentum palpebrale mediale here, and then inserts at the lateral ligament palpebral. And this uh, part, pars palpebralis, um, acts involuntary. It kind of closes the eyelid gently, like like blinking or sleeping. And the next one is pars lacrimalis. Pars lacrimalis originates at uh, the uh, lacrimal bone and inserts at the lacrimal sac. You can see it on this picture. It's kind of inside here, but you can see the lacrimal sac here. Uh, the function of this muscle is to expand the lacrimal sac so that uh, the tears uh, is, is kind of leads the tears into the uh, canalis lacrimalis down to the nose. So that's the musculus orbicularis oculi. And we also have the musculus corrigator supercilii. Uh, it originates at the glabella here and inserts at the skin of the eyebrows. And the function of this muscle is to pull the skin of the eyebrows downwards and medially, kind of. Uh, gives you the expression of a thinker. So the next muscle group is going to be the muscles of the nose opening. And that group consists of two muscles. They have the musculus nasalis here and musculus levator labi superioris alaque nasi. It's kind of a long word, but the more you say it, the easier it will be. It's going to start down here and go up to the uh, processus uh, frontalis maxillae. So musculus nasali originates at processus alveolaris maxillaris at the, here the alveoli uh, processus alveoli maxillaris and inserts at the cartilage of the external nose. This happens the same at the other side and the function of that one is that it pulls the nasal wings downwards kind of makes the nasal opening uh, um, smaller. And the next one, musculus levator superioris alaque nasalis. Um, it starts at the processus frontalis maxillae, here, and inserts at the skin of the upper lip and also the nasal wing. And the function of that one is that it elevates the nasal wing and the upper lip upwards. So when you smile, you will notice that the nose also kind of goes a little upwards. And the next muscle group is going to be muscles around the oral opening. And I'll try to put them in groups. So the first group is the sides that makes you smile, the muscles of the smile, those going to be musculus zygomaticus major, minor and musculus uh, risorius it's here. And the next one is on the sides or angle of the mouth, it's musculus levator anguli oris and musculus levator uh, lab, uh, depressor anguli oris and then musculus levator labi superioris and musculus depressor labi inferioris. It's going to be the same muscles, it's just the opposite side of the mouth. You will notice musculus levator anguli, anguli, this is depressor and levator. And then you have the lateral wall of the oral cavity. You have the musculus buc uh, bucinator, which is going to be the muscle of satisfactory. And you have the kissing muscle, or the muscles around the lips, musculus orbicularis uri, and last muscle of this group is going to be the musculus mentalis, which is going to uh, be the muscle of the doubt. Of doubt. So let's go over to uh, the smiling muscles. You have, uh, as I said, you have musculus zygomaticus major, and minor is going to originate at uh, os zygomaticus up here. And uh, musculus risorius it's going to originate at the fascia masseterica. It's going to be uh, the um, uh, connective tissue 
that covers the musculus masseterica if you watched my movie uh, my vi last video about muscle of the mastication it's going to insert there origin from there and all three muscles are going to sit at the skin of the angle of the mouth so just to uh, show you or kind of give you a better picture I have um, this 3d model here here you will see the muscle uh, uh, musculo zygomaticus maior and musculo zygomaticus minor you will see that they both sit on the zygomatic bone and you also have the musculus uh, risorius which sits on the fascia of the um, masseter muscle and they all uh, sit on the angle of the mouth so that is the smiling muscles when you smile those are going to be contracted next muscle group is the muscles on the side or angle of the mouth so what makes the lips lift that's going to be musculus levator anguli uris which originates at fossa canina kind of going to be um, behind the levator labi superior it's going to be back here and it inserts at the skin of the angle of the mouth and next one is musculus levator labi superior it's going to be sit above the levator anguli uris and it originates at margo infraorbitalis maxilla and insert the skin of the upper lip. I'm going to show you it on the 3D model later. And on the lower lip here, you have musculus depressor anguli uris, um, which originates from the basis mandibula and inserts at the angle of the mouth. And musculus depressor labi inferioris, which sits on the basis mandibula and goes to the lower lip. So if you go back to the uh, 3D model here. The first muscle here is going to be the musculus levator labi superior. Remember, uh, it's going to be above the musculus uh, levator anguli uris. Right? Musculus labi superior, levator labi superior, and musculus levator anguli uris. That's the superior. And the inferior muscle is going to be the um, musculus depressor anguli uris and musculi depressor labi inferiori so those are the four muscles that that cover the angle of the of the mouth all right the next muscles is going to be the lateral wall of the oral cavity uh, also called the muscle of satisfaction <laughs> as you see in this picture uh, it's going to be the mus uh, musculus buccinator it originates from processus alveolaris maxilla and mandibula. Here, the processus alveolaris maxilla and man mandibula, and uh, which are the area of the raphepteriglu mandibula. It's, uh, I'm gonna uh, mention that later on uh, in another video. And it inserts at the skin of the angle of the mouth. And the function of that, uh, this muscle, is to pull the angle of the mouth laterally, compresses the cheeks, as you see here. So the next muscle group is going to be the muscle of the lips. The muscle of the lips is going to be uh, musculus orbicularis uris. Remember, on the eye, we said musculus orbicularis uculi. This is musculus orbicularis uris. And that's going to be fibers arranged circular, uh, circularly. That's the origin and insertion of the muscle. Uh, this muscle is uh, consists of two parts, pars marginalis and pars labialis. So pars labialis is going to be here, and pars uh, marginalis is going to be around here. Uh, and the function of this uh, muscle is that it closes the lips, produce them, pro uh, protrudes them forward like, uh, the, like when you're kissing. That's a kissing muscle. So the next and last one of the uh, muscles around the uh, mouth is going to be the chin the, or the muscle of doubt, as you see here. 
that's called the musculus mentalis. And musculus mentalis originates from processus alveolaris mandibula down here and inserts at the skin of the chin. And the function of this one is uh, mostly expressed when in doubt it produces small dimples in the chin. You probably noticed that on your chin as well. And the next and last muscles of this video is uh, the three muscles around the ear opening. It's going to be auricularis anterior here, auricularis superior, auricularis posterior. Those mus uh, muscles are located uh, closest to the uh, skin above the musculus temporalis or the fascia of the musculus temporalis. And they're going to be responsible of moving your ear when you smile or or lift the eyebrows or yeah some people can actually move the ear without moving any uh, any um, structure of the face I can't do that <laughs> so uh, that's gonna be the end of the video and I hope this was helpful